Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. It has been a while and there's reasons for that. I'll explain um, later on in this episode why that was, but we're back. I'll try to just continue the schedule as you're used to it. So uh, one or two deck guides per week and there's a little cat hair flying around here because my cat is here. Look, look, there she is. She's a cutie. Now you're on camera. But enough about cats. Jesus Christ, the cat hair is everywhere. Um, we're here to talk about a Gwent deck guide. And today we're going to be going back into Skellige, into my favorite archetype within Skellige, because there has been, um, well, 12 new cards added. You can see them right here. I uh, might actually do a separate video about those, because they are all quite interesting. But today we're going to be looking at a self wound deck that uses the new Ceres Fearless card. So, uh, yeah, and I called this deck Fearless, Not Painless. And there we have the Fearless, Not Painless deck, as you can see right here. This is the deck setup, quite clean, if I can say so myself. Uh, and I'm doing pretty well with this deck, one because, well, I started my season a bit later because of those aforementioned events. But uh, yeah, I really like what they've done by uh, just adding a single card, basically. They also made a few changes to artists, we'll be checking him out in a minute. But these cards are now really, really working together very, very well. They've uh, CDPR has been building up this archetype bit by bit, and I feel like it's finally in a place where it starts to be pretty competitive. It's Especially in a meta that is filled with control, this deck beats a lot of those. Um, so, we're gonna go through each and every single card one by one and I'll try to explain a few of the combos beforehand and after that we'll go into a few example matches. If you're not interested in the description of these cards, then you can skip right ahead using the timeline down below and just skip right to those example matches so you can check me, um, well, hopefully beating a few people with this deck. Still here, let's go through the cards. So first up, we have the Armored Drakkar. The Armored Drakkar is a 4 power, 2 armor, 4 provision card that at the end of the turn, if he has no armor, so if it has no armor, it regains that 2 armor that it started with. If it loses the armor, it also boosts itself by 1. If you have two damaged opponents on the other side of the board, so two damaged enemy units on the other side of the board, you boost yourself by two instead. So possibly giving you two points every turn as long as you can damage it properly, which is uh, what this deck is really good at. Next up, she's become a staple of Skellige these days in the four provision slots, so the little half throughs, two of them in here, six power for four provisions already pretty good. And if she is bonded, so if there's another one on the field already, you increase this card's base power by another two putting her up to 8. She also has another ability where she damages herself by 4 and spawn, spawn, spawns rain for 2 turns on an enemy row. So basically giving you 4 points in return for the 4 points you lost. But on top of that, this deck is really good at healing uh, damage, so you can actually get those uh, damage points back. And then we have the Hermit, crucial in this deck. 7 power, 4, 4 provisions and on deploy he damages himself by 4. As long as you're damaged, so Ombrister 6, at the end of your turn you damage the unit to the right by 1 and then heal yourself by 2. So you need to damage the unit to the right before he will heal himself. So this card basically will keep healing itself until he's back up to 7 power. Which is going to come in really handy for the remainder of this deck. Then the Svalbard Priest is really, really similar. So starts at 3 power for 5 provisions and at the end of your turn, without any caveats whatsoever, you damage the unit to the right by 1 and then boost yourself by 2. So the only difference here is that he's boosting, not healing. And of course, you don't need to be damaged for this ability to trigger because he will do this regardless. Then we have the Hafru Singer, um, another very, very good card. So basically an 8-point card on deploy where you have 4 points in the body. On deploy, you heal an allied unit by 2, which is definitely going to be able to... Uh, happen because we have a lot of damaged units and the first time you heal an allied unit during your turn you spawn a deafening siren on this row so another two point body that will also trigger on her own healing ability so uh, that's why those eight points where those eight points are coming from then a very underestimated card uh, lately but the Tweer sock veteran is still still has the same ability as it, it, he had before but 
Um, because of the strengthening of the archetype, this has become a very powerful card indeed. So eight power for five provisions on deploy. You damage yourself by three. So we're starting to see a team here and on Berserk three. So if you hit three power or less, he heals himself fully back to eight. So basically also an almost immortal engine where you can dump your damage points on top of because he will just uh, get all of that back once he hits three again. Now we have Yoana. Yoana is a very underestimated card in Skellige and I always love to include her in a cell phone deck. You've seen that a few times if you're uh, on this channel for a while already. But uh, Yoana, five power for six provisions and on order you heal an allied unit by one, uh, by two, where she, char she starts with a single charge. But on top of that, every time one of her adjacent allies is hit with damage, she gains another charge, which can rack up really, really immensely. And that just gives her a lot of healing power. Um, not for herself, of course, but we have a few other cards that can dish out some healing as well. So Yoana, very, very powerful card. And now we have Restore. We have another one of those healing cards. Um, this is a... Very cool card that can trigger some interesting combos. So you heal an allied unit fully and then you boost it by the amount it was healed. So basically doubling up on the healing. So for example, if you put that on a hermit that wasn't um, healing itself already, um, he would be healed up to seven. So from three to four to seven is four points. And then you gain another four points on top of that, giving you eight in total. So that's why it's also very interesting that we have a lot of high powered units because uh, those will get the most benefit from the restore card and then we have Haim for Haim I'm gonna have to put a pin in this ability I'm gonna explain it really shortly but Haim factors into a lot of combinations in this deck so it starts at one power for seven provisions and on deploy you swap this unit's power with a damaged unit's power this has two functions either you can do this on your own units there are a few units that actually benefit from getting damaged that far um, and you just gain the points on top of Heim, and then your other unit should have an ability where they can get those points that they lost back. Now, you can also use this on your opponent's abilities. We have a few bits of rain, we have a few bits of damage, we have one more that we'll check out in a minute, but if you have a slightly damaged enemy unit with a high base power, Heim can also just swap its power with him which is very powerful because basically that means that you double up on the points that you take away from your opponents. For example, if you hit a uh, nine base power, but now damage to eight power unit from your opponent, you will gain seven points on Heim, but your opponent loses seven points on there. So that's another 14 points in one go with Heim. But again, we also have a lot of options in our own deck to use this card with, and uh, you can also resurrect it with Fukushima, which is uh, definitely sometimes a very good idea. Then we have Harold Houndsnout, a four power card where you deploy, um, well, on deploy, you spawn three of Harold's pals and summon them to the other allied row. So if you put Harold on the melee row, the pals will go on the range row and vice versa. He also has an order ability where he damages an allied unit by one. And of course you can do that on those pals because those pals are doomed one power tokens where they damage a random enemy unit by two whenever you kill them. Um, so basically giving you um, about 10 points uh, for seven provisions if all the damage hits something properly. It also gives you a lot of bodies on the field that can actually take some heat hits because of course if they... Uh, a random damage ping hits the Herald's pals, the, uh, your opponent will be getting hit by another two points of damage back. Now we have Viltkarl, the first of our combo pieces. So five power for seven provisions, and when he hits two power, he transforms into the champion of Svalblood, which is a 12 power beast that also has its own order ability where you can destroy an allied unit and heal himself fully. So the champion of Svalblood is actually a good card to work with Heim as well because you can hit the champion of Svalblood with one of your many ways that you can hit your own units, putting him to 11, then you can use Heim on top of this champion of Svalblood losing him um, another 10 points. So it goes to one power, Heim goes up to 11. And on top of that, you can use Champion's ability to destroy one of those, um, maybe those um, Deafening Sirens from your uh, Hafru Singers, for example, and heal himself back to 12. Very, very powerful combo indeed, but there's even more powerful combo pieces that we have in this deck. Next up, of course, we also have Blue Boy Lugol, 6 power for 7 provisions, and whenever this unit takes damage, you damage a random enemy unit by 2. 
Now, normally this gives you a maximum of 10 damage, but, but we also have a lot of ways to heal Blue Boy Lugos back up to 6, meaning that you could technically keep this going as long as your opponent doesn't find a way to permanently end his life. Now we have Sigdrifal's Rite, the first of our resurrection cards. Um, just very simply summon a Skellige unit from your graveyard to an allied row and give it doomed. Most important thing here is that of course we're summoning, so you're not playing, so you're not getting the deployability of whatever you're summoning, but you can definitely use that on Blue Boy Lugos, um, the Champion of Soul Blood, for example as well, because remember, this uh, 12 point big guy does not have Doom, so once you transform Vildkarl into the Champion, he will be a 12 point beast in your graveyard as well, making him ideal to get some uh, tempo in round one as well. Next up is another underestimated card, this uh, seems to be a team for this deck, but the Dire bear 8 power for 9 provisions and units in this and the opposite row can't be boosted if this card is damaged it only affects the opposite row so only affects your opponent's row this can block so many point potential so many potential points i should say from your opponents if you know what your opponent is playing like for example vampires is very popular right now you know that oriana will be coming oriana is fixed on the range so only works there so you can put Dire Bear on your range row and Oriana will never boost unless this card is somehow destroyed or locked. But again, 8 power, very hard to destroy. Um, and of course, you can heal him back up slowly if you want to. And now we have the card that is this uh, deck kind of revolves around now as well, the new Ceres Fearless card. And her ability reads, after you've dealt damage to allied units nine times, you summon yourself from the deck to your ranged row. She also has a very interesting order ability where she fully heals an allied unit and then damages another allied unit by the amount healed. Sounds like a very bad deal. Of course, you heal something, but then you hit something else for the same amount. Now. This ability is not limited by what you want to hit. So for example, if you heal a 12 power unit from 2 to 12 again, then that would mean 10 damage. But nothing is stopping you from putting that 10 damage on one of Harold's spells or on the Deafening Siren or on something that would survive that hit because there's a few cards in this deck that would actually do that. Um, so very very powerful card that usually means that you can uh, get round one pretty easily because this order ability also refreshes every turn possibly giving you just a boatload of points every single turn with just this card if possible you can leave this card for later but there's so many self damage going around that you will probably pull her in the first round regardless and then of course we have the queen herself melusine is back seven power for 10 provisions and veil and on order you spawn rain on an enemy row for two turns and damage yourself by two giving you two points extra on her order ability but of course she also has a very interesting passive ability where she uh, damages her adjacent units by one at the end of every turn and then gains one base power for each enemy uh, well and every unit she hits so your allied units um, if any of those damaged units was a cultist you also refresh the order ability so pretty complicated but basically gives you a unit that can keep boosting herself or not boosting herself strengthening herself her base power higher and higher throughout the match so as long as this card isn't banished in any way shape or form or stolen then you have this really huge beast that just keeps growing and you can just resurrect a few times with Sigrifa's right or Fukushima. And now we have Olaf, another very interesting combo piece, uh, especially with uh, Haim. Olaf starts at 10 power for 10 provisions and on order you boost Olaf by twice the amount he is damaged. Basically giving you the restore card but built into Olaf himself. So if he's at 1 power he will boost himself back to 10 and then 9 on top of that. So basically doubling the amount you're healed um, to 19. So that's the maximum that Olaf can actually reach. But with Heim that is very easy to do. You just put Olaf on the field, damage him once and then play Heim on top of Olaf, switching the power around and then just triggering Olaf's order ability and you get 19 plus another uh, 9 from Heim as well so that's 28 points with just two cards and now we have Artis. Artis changed his ability just a little bit his ranged ability is still the same so whenever a unit is played you damage it by half its power but he gained an extra ability he also rose a bit in um, provision cost so he's at 11 right now but uh, on deploy you also play a four provision cultist from your deck there's only one in this deck so you can't lose out on this card it's always going to be the hermit so keep an eye out for those hermits and keep them in your deck so you can at least pull one with artists 
Um, because of Artis's ability, the Hermit will go to a very scary 1 power when you play it, but because of the passive of the Hermit, he will also heal himself back to 3 immediately, giving you 3 turns on the Hermit instead of just 2 on the usual basis. But a um, very, very easy way to get some uh, self-damaging going, especially because this ranged ability also counts for your opponent. So whatever unit your opponent will be playing, their, their unit will also be uh, halved in power. So very, very powerful engine card indeed. And then of course we talked about her a few times already, but Fukushima is still in this uh, deck as well. 4 power for 14 provisions and on deploy you play a Skellige unit from your graveyard with a provision cost of 10 or less and give it doomed. And then spawn rain on the opposite side with the uh, duration equal to the unused provision. So if you used it on Heim, he is uh, 7 provisions, you get 3 turns of rain on top of that. So a very, very powerful card. Tactical advantage assist simply are, uh, well, just our stratagem card. We don't need anything else that is that fancy. And then, of course, our leader ability is Ursa and Ritual. We're not going for Battle Trance this time because we don't really have that many alchemy cards. And Ursa and Ritual in this archetype is just better. So you have five charges of your leader ability where you damage an allied unit by one each time. And once all charges are used up, you automatically spawn a six power bear abomination on a random allied row, giving you... Uh, um, technically 11, well only one point, because of course you're damaging your own unit, but we get so much out of those self damages that you uh, will definitely be able to um, yeah, find a use for those self damages. And that's it, you can find the link to the Play Gwent website with this uh, deck guide in there as well. Don't forget to upvote it there, because I really appreciate every single bit of support that I can get. Um, but yeah, enough babbling let's get right into those example matches to see if fearless not painless actually works on ranked and our first opponent is actually a mirror so we're facing Skellige as well with ursine ritual so we're gonna have to be pretty careful and that we get some good draws here as well so Cyrus we don't need so Cyrus I kind of forgot to talk about that but she's also tinning because she tins herself we have a double resurrection here which is pretty good, but we're lacking in a bit of self damagers here. So, okay, we get Malacene, so that is really good. And we'll have to see what our opponent plays with, because I have no idea what most people play with self damaging. Ooh! Never mind, it's Ceres. That's not that big of a classic, though, so. Guess we'll see. So, let's start with an arm. That was not a word. An Armored Drakkar. Kind of sounded like I had a stroke there. But uh, there we go. Armored Drakkar. Always a good starting play. Just keep that boat rocking. Could of course get hit with a um, Giga Scorpion decoction. But that seems a bit oh much right now. But judging from the... Okay, there we go. Judging from the deck, this is probably um, a Lippy. So I should probably push as hard as possible, but we can also get hit with a karate here, so I'm gonna have to be careful. My cat is really getting in the way, as you can probably see by the tail in front of the camera. I think I'll just put Blue Boy Lugos down now, and then put the priest right next to him. We might be able to... it's not the best matchup here. But um, I think we might be able to get away with a few things here. So opponent is deciding probably which card to draw with their stratagem. I'm really curious where this is going. So we get the Heimei Protector in between there as well. Which is probably a good call that might actually get back a little bit of the uh, damage that is going to come in because of uh, Blue Boy Lugals here. So there we go. We get hit on Ceres there. Then we get a Megascope, so we're gonna get a lot of Queen's Guards here. Um, I'm gonna put Malacene in between the Priest and Blue Boy. So we can get that going. If we get hit with Karate Heatwave, that's gonna be too bad. But it is what it is. And there we get Karate Heatwave immediately. That was to be expected. I can now actually put the Hafru Singe and heal Blue Boy back to full. And that gets us another 8 points. And we're still going with our combo here. We get another Megascope, so the Queen's Guards are coming in, which is uh, fair enough, I suppose. Now, our Priest combo is also still going. We won't be healing just yet, although we could do that with the Triasak Veteran. We could, actually. I lack a lot of self-damaging here. 
So I think I might just put down the Tversark veteran here. And that actually is enough. I don't need to push this any further. So that second Queen's Guard is gonna come up, but that's gonna be it. And even then, if they try to take out the veteran here, that's not gonna help them much either. They could go for a um Skull of Corruption is usually in that deck as well, so that could take out the priest. But that would be pretty early. Although, of course, with Lippy, you get all your cards back. And we get Blue Boy. We get Blue Boy, so that's going to hit a few times. And we get pretty lucky there, so that is a heal. And that actually resets the order ability again. I'm not going to get more use out of the Dire Bear than this, so might as well put him down now. Our opponent actually wasted a lot of their leader ability. So I'm actually just going to put this over there. And that means that that Heimei Protector now can't boost anymore. So we're still three points ahead. Um, but we're getting pretty close to Ceres, I'm assuming. Uh, so Ceres, I'm going to actually check. Can we see that? No, we don't have a countdown there. And I kind of missed what happened there, but I think we got... Yeah... We got the Dire Bear got hit by Becker's Rock Slide. Okay. I could use Viltkarl now. Um, and just hit him once. That should be... Although I'm getting really close to uh, our leader ability. So I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to leave it at that. And we still have a double Resurrector in hand. So that is also really good. Our opponent is deciding. We're going to get a hell of a bunch of points here. So we're getting Heron Kaduch with the Bear School Witcher. Is that going to be enough? That's a 12 point card. We're getting one point from the Priest. We're going to get another eight from the Champion. We're going to get 10 points, so that's just not enough. Yeah, let's just do Sigdrifa's right and get the Dire Bear back. There we go. And chances are that we're going to get Ceres now. Yeah, there we go. There she is. And I'd actually put Viltkarl up to two. I kind of forgot that he triggers at Berserk 2, not Berserk 3. So yeah, now he actually triggers. Okay, so we got rid of Ceres now, sadly. Can't really use her any further, but uh, that's still a very good point to continue. So now what we want to do is, of course, push. We want to push as hard as we can. And we get, hmm, not the perfect hand. Hermit can go. We get another Twirsak and Veteran. Not Invader, Veteran. And we get the Hafru Singer. Not ideal, um, but we're gonna try. What else do we still have? We have Olaf as well and Heim. There's a few good cards in there, but I don't want to lose some of the combo pieces here. So I'm just gonna finish with this. So let's put Harold Hounds now down. He can uh, start getting... Um, yeah, some pals down on the field. That might help us out just a little bit. So there's two ways that this can go. So now we get locked on um, Harold Houndsnout. That is fine. Um, so there's two ways this can go. Either we push until we've seen all the uh, Queen's cards come out. Which is probably going to be the most ideal situation here. I'm also going to put down the Tversark Veteran. So that's another biggie over there. Giga Scorpion, Giga Scorpion Decoction is gone, so they can just get rid of that in one go. The lock is gone, but even without the lock, I could just use the um, the Huffer Singer to heal back those two points. And there we go, we got Lippy. There we go, but we're still in the advantage here, so I'm not gonna let that slide in any way, shape or form. There's a few things that we could technically do. So we can't get Saris back. I think Saris is, no, Saris we can actually get. I never tried that actually, getting Saris back with uh, Fukushima. But Hafru Singer onto uh, the veteran here. So that's another eight points for us, giving us equal points. And our opponent, I'm just gonna force our opponent to uh, get rid of that massive combo. And then we get the Brockfar Hunter. So that, of course, is not going to do. Um, we're going to put... What am I going to resurrect here? should probably resurrect the um, the Svalblood champion. Yeah. I think I actually get some rain from that as well. So I'm going to put Fukushima in the back. Resurrect the um, champion of Svalblood. There we go. And then I'm going to put four points on the Tversark veteran. 
There we go, and that's gonna heal him and we're gonna get another point out of that. Um, I could also now hit, but they're gonna get enough points with uh, the Ceres combo here. I'm just gonna force that out of them. There we go, we actually got three turns of rain because the Champion of Fallblood got the same provision cost as uh, Viltkarl. But there we go, they need to get 17 points, which they will. They will get 17 points, but I kept my lead ability for the very last. But they And they will have to spend it if they don't... Get, but they have Oneiromancy, so that's not going to be a problem. So there we go, Oneiromancy onto Ceres. Onto that entire row of Queen's guards. There we go. And that was... Okay, so they didn't use the leader ability either, because they used the Brock for a Hunter to trigger Ceres' ability. So that gets us unequal for the final round, and we don't have any Resurrectors anymore. This might actually be interesting. Okay, I do get my combo piece. Joanna's gonna be useless, Hermit is not gonna be... okay. So if there is Poirati in there, I might not be as well equipped as I thought I was gonna be. If there's Korati, I'm gone anyway, um, so I need to just play Olaf now. So if that gets Korati, we're done, and uh, we got Korati. Okay, they got really lucky with that. That was just extremely lucky. Um, so now we can just put the Hermit down. Um, I can still swap with the Hermit, but that's not going to make the difference. Um, so that's going to hit one more time, and that's that, okay. So the one thing that I can do is swap with Blue Boy. It's gonna not count as damage because we're basically swapping. Um, and then do this. And that's just enough to get a sequel. <laughs> wow. But yeah, they got really lucky that they got Karate out of those nine cards. Damn, that was equal. Very fun match though. Okay, next up is another Skellige, but Onslaught this time, which is actually pretty good, because that means that we might actually stand a chance here. Because um, Onslaught will try to get rid of some of our cards, but we can tank most of the hits. I'm going to get rid of one of the Armor Track cards. I would like to get rid of one of the Tweersock Veterans as well, but the other cards are just too good to pass up here. Yeah, let's get rid of one of those, and Restore can go as well. Yeah, let's get rid of that as well. Okay. Okay, so as I said before, let's start with the uh, tanky engine and get the armored Drakkar on it here. I can actually boost it by 5 as well. don't think that can hurt. Just a big meaty tank on the field just to start with. And then we get the discard package to start with as well, so that is going to be absolutely fine. That should give me the opportunity to start with the priests. And getting some self damage in there. I do lack a little bit of self damage here. There's not that many cards here that will uh, damage me. And that priest is just as flimsy as it looks. So those five points can go in one go. So we can get hit there. And are we going to get hit with an onslaught? Hit already? That would be really early. Yeah, there we go. Fair enough. Um, next up is going to be Malacene then. I'm gonna start using her, so she can actually hit the ship. There we go. And then we get the Dimmon Light Longship, which is gonna start hitting Melusine. Okay. We can actually use Melusine to put some rain in the back, and then we can use the Hafu Singer to heal up Melusine just a tiny little bit. Herkia. So Herkia might hit something at random. There we go. That actually got rid of the, that deafening siren over there. Um, is it actually whenever an enemy unit becomes damaged, so it doesn't really matter if it's uh, because of them or not. Which is a bit sad, actually. Um, I can put Melusine over here. You can use Viltkarl to get the round, so that is not a problem. Um, I just want to use the Tweersock Veteran now. So that if it gets hit with some random damage, um, it will actually heal up. Um, I can actually use one charge and we can get another um, yeah, Deafening Siren from that, so that is absolutely fine. I don't get the reorder ability again for the rain, but that's absolutely fine, I think. Demon Smuggler, so we get two of those. I'm going to start hitting some units. 
And of course, they get the extra armor from the fact that, uh, yeah, the Tweersock Veteran went into damaged again. Vilt Carl is probably better the better option here. Um, just hit him twice with the leader ability. Or, yeah, Blue Boy Lugals. Should probably take Blue Boy, Blue Boy Lugals instead, because Blue Boy can actually hit now, while later on they'll get all that armor and he won't be able to hit sh jack shit with the Blue Boy anymore. I think we got a nice cycle going here. And there we go, we got the boss. And I think... Yeah, that doesn't trigger Ceres, right? No, okay. So Ceres is still safe in the deck, which means that we could either push or not. Oh, we get Fukusia and Artis. I'm gonna have to get rid of the Hermit here. Tearsock Veteran is ideal. Um, so the only thing I need to be careful of is that I use... I can actually get Heim as well. Is that I use Olaf on the other road and Dire Bear. But other than that, this seems to be A-OK. -okay. So let's finish redrawing. And there is absolutely nothing stopping me from using Artis immediately now. Aside from the fact that, you know, there's no real good target for the Hermit that I'm going to be spawning. But there we go. Let's put that in between here. We get Ceres as well now. So the Uncrate Longship. Uh, but, but of course Artis will be less uh, powerful now because of the fact that we... Uh, yeah. Hmm. Gonna have to be careful about that. But Tweersark Veteran with Artis on the field is actually pretty nice. Because when he gets hit, we just heal it back up to full. And we can actually just heal up Artis now. Um, as well, and just put that on the Tweersock Veteran. Because he doesn't really care about that extra damage. There we go. And then we get Coral. Coral will also start damaging units. But Coral didn't have armor because Coral is not a ship or a pirate. There we go. Art is getting hit again. But we can just heal that up. They are getting a lot of armor too from us. So that is kind of ridiculous, but uh, I don't really care about that armor anymore. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything that I need to be careful about healing-wise. Um, I think the Dire Bear might actually be pretty okay. Just put that over to the front. So like this. That's going to get halved. But I can heal that up by putting it on the Tweersock Veteran and he will go back up to 8. So that is absolutely fine. And then we get Burna. I kind of also forgot to put Malacene back on the board and iCloud is complaining. So we get Burna hit twice, which is still okay. I keep wondering why they don't kill Ceres here. They don't. Okay. So that means I'm going to use Sigdrifa's right to actually get Malacene on the board now. Let's put that over here. That is not played, so it doesn't get halved. Uh, and we can actually heal... Artis back up to full and put that on the Tweersock Veteran, which will go back up to 8. There we go. And that's why you need to kill Ceres as quickly as possible, because Ceres is actually really good. And then we get the Dim and Light Longship with 13 armor. Look at that armor on those cards. Now the start to become slightly ridiculous. And we get hit on that one again, so the uh, Veteran will start hitting again. Uh, let's put Olaf down. Olaf goes down to... Four. Um, I can actually do six and that doesn't really matter now, does it? Let's put some rain on the back row. Um, and then I could heal something, but I don't think it matters. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we definitely got that match in the back. We still had a lot of points because this champion would have been 12 and then we could technically resurrect Melusine again with Fukushima on the next round. So whew, that actually worked out a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And then we face monsters, overwhelming hunger. That might actually be interesting. We need to play around a few things. So we're going to have to play this smart, but we do have a few cards that give us a lot of targets. Not the best starting hand. I need to get rid of Ceres immediately. Wow. Okay. Now, considering the situation, might as well get rid of this one of the singers. Oh, damn. And then little Hoffu. Um, the Dire Bear is very powerful, though, against monsters, so we're going to be able to see that in full swing. But first things first, Armored Drakkar on the field, and that will... Hopefully, just take the brunt of a few hits. 
Or maybe we just get hit with a manticore and that's it. No. Okay. Uh, that's good. That means that we can just put our Fall Blood combo on the field. So the priest right next to the Drakkar. And that just keeps on generating points. Generating points. That was what I wanted to say. Then we get a Harpy Egg. And that's their play being set up. Um, and we can actually just play the uh, Tweersock Veteran on the field. And then heal that up with the Hoffru singing in a minute. So both players being pretty careful here. Um, we're going to be healing up that. And then I'm just going to give the 5 points to the Hoffru singer here. I could play the Dire Bear on the front row. Um, but I need to get the Hermit going as well. So that's two cycles going, and that also heals, so that also generates a Deafening Siren. And we get the Mushy Truffle for carryover. So that's gonna eat up the Arcaspore, giving us 40 41. I don't want to see that carry over, so ideally, we win this round. I'm going to put a dire bear down on the front row. Although I should probably put it down on the back row. Yeah, let's do front row, see how far we get with this. So now those larvae aren't going to boost anymore. And we still generate like a buttload of points. Because if we can keep this round... Then our opponents won't have any use for that carryover from the Mushy Truffle. It's only if they win the round and then start pushing that they have those extra 6 points. And I don't want to see that happen. So the reason why I put... Yeah, I shouldn't have put the uh, Dire Bear in the back here, by the way. Because these two cards actually boost, so the Dire Bear would have blocked that. And then we get Golden Frot on those cards, but they... <laughs> why would you do that? Why would you do that? So the carryover is gone, and I still have a pretty good cycle going. I am gonna pass. So the consume from the Desert Banshee isn't gonna get them any extra points, so this is textbook Dire Bear. So everybody forgets what the Dire Bear does, because even I almost forgot what it does. So we're still generating at least two points. So they need to overcome 15 points. Yeah, they misplayed with the Dire Bear. There we go, so they don't get those extra 4 points from the Desert Banshee. They did get 3 points extra because of course you got that extra unit generating there. But now the Desert Banshee and the Larva are not generating points. At all. Now we get the Imperial Manticore. That's also not going to do anything. And that's also not going to boost, so that is actually a really... What are you doing? The Dire Bear is stopping those points from generating. You're not boosting. So yeah, we're going to get another two points. Yeah, okay, there we go. I think we won this already. So yeah, it is a very good showcase of the Dire Bear against monsters, because I've seen this more than once. A lot of people forget what the Dire Bear does, that it also counts, consumes as boosting. Um, this is a pretty good hand. Um, Restore can definitely work well with Melusine. Um, So I'm going to get rid of Yowala now. And maybe even the Hafru Singer, because I have Restore. Yeah, okay, little Hafru then. Um, so start out hefty with Herald Hands now. We're just going to take this by force now. Our opponent has no chance anymore, I think. So we'll just let this play out and maybe use this as a little bit of a showcase of some of the combos. We get Haunt immediately. But Haunt is also not good, because that um, Desert Banshee is going to go in uh, one go. Um, so I don't have anything... That I really need to put right next to this card, so that is fine. So Melusine is going to kill that Desert Banshee by using those two piles as projectiles. I can see her tossing those skulls right into that Desert Banshee's face. And then we get Ruin, but yeah, Ruin is, is too late, I think. Even with that combo, I don't think our opponent will be able to uh, surpass what we'll be able to pull out here. Um... So let's put the rain down over here, doesn't really matter, because I want to get that damage going on uh, Malacene. Now we got Weaver's Incantation. Okay, fair enough, gives, gives you another, um, another consume though. I could resurrect the Dire Bear, but I think that's better just in case I don't win this round. It would be better to just use that later on, so I'm just gonna use um, Harold here to start damaging Olaf. 
And there we have Saris. Saris we're going to be using for a particular option here, but I think our opponent is actually, um, yeah, forfeiting by just disconnecting. Or not. The game seems to be continuing. Oh, I actually never thought about that interaction. The armored Drakkar is not not getting its armor back because it lost its armor after the end of the turn because Malacene was triggered first, uh, secondly. Interesting. Um, what can I resurrect now? I'm just gonna resurrect the Dire Bear now. Um, might as well. I'm gonna put that on the back row. I don't think that Bargus will ever get high enough again, so I'm just gonna put the Dire Bear in the back. The only extra points I lose with that is on the armor truck car. Um, and Saris Fearless isn't really used for anything at the moment, so that's fine. That's fine. There we go. Melusine hitting on the armor again. And now we get the Itty Bitty Spider getting another um, Dead Love down, but yeah, Dire Bear is again blocking blocking all of that um so the boost of restore is not going to do anything just yet but i have a plan for even that so uh keep that in mind for in a minute um let's just put one more damage on olaf there it's actually a good showcase of the abilities here um so yeah the drag art didn't actually boost now because of the loss of armor but that's not that, that much of a problem um, but our opponent wants to actually consume those over there. So they're going to get another that loft, but that's basically it. Because even the consume is not doing anything. They get three points extra, but that's it. Um, so what I'm now going to do is just use Harold Houndsnout to increase... Well, decrease the Dire Bear up to Berserk 7. Which means that it only triggers that ability anymore. And now we can just use Ursine Ritual on Malacene. And maybe one more on Olaf. There we go. And then restore Malacene up to 23 and double Olaf as well. And that is it. There we go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And that I think should be sufficient to show off the many combos that you can perform with this deck. There's a lot of pieces on the board right now. You can shuffle around your healing and damage with Saris now, which is a very, very powerful tool to use. Malacene is still the powerhouse that she's always been. Um, Artis is really good at being very oppressive towards her opponent if they keep him alive for some reason. And then you can just get everything back with Fukushima. Sigdrifa's right. Um, and even against monsters, as you just saw that final match, our opponent did kind of not play around this very well, but Dire Bear is definitely the hindrance for decks like that. Decks that really like to focus on boosting a lot. You can even counteract something like K here with that by putting the Dire Bear on the front row. Or as I said before, if you're facing vampires with Oriana, Oriana is a very good boosting engine, but she needs to be on the ranged row to work. So if you put your Dire Bear on the ranged row, Oriana will never boost a single point. So all of those tools are very, very well compacted within this very smooth deck. So you can check out that link and import it um, to your own um, game from the Playground website in the link in the description of this video. Let me know what you think about it as well and just upvote it there because that just uh, helps me with exposing my deck ideas. And now that's it for this episode. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about as I said at the beginning of this episode. If you um, stayed for this long I feel like you're more inclined to listen to this or care about this. Um, than anybody who just started the video and went with it and the reason why I went on a I think it was three weeks of a hiatus uh, is because my wife lost her stepfather um, three weeks ago um, yeah it is now three weeks ago almost um, so it was very sudden which is why I just stopped making videos very suddenly as well and there was no video explaining this on the the on the channel either so uh, I don't blame you if you didn't notice the only tweet that I sent about it on Twitter um, but yeah it, it was a rough period um, but I feel like I'm, I'm yeah I wasn't ready at that point to just be my happy self on camera afterwards um, we processed most of that by now um, well it's it's of course an ongoing process but um, I feel like, like I was in the right mindset again to start making videos so thank you for listening to me blabbering on about that and thank you for listening in general because uh, i'm gonna end this episode here a bit of a dour note but uh, expect 
the videos on the same schedule as before so one or two deck guys per week as usual and i'm trying to see especially during the holiday period now if i can get a few more um how should I put this, like like other gameplay videos on the channel. So I'm really aiming to, to finish Demon Souls, for example, on the channel as well. Um, so you'll see those episodes popping up really soon as well. So thank you enormously for watching. Um, if you want to stay in the loop about updates like that, don't forget to actually follow me on Twitter as well. That's at, tr tr at TrophyNut. So at TrophyNut, that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T. Um, on Twitter and you can just follow along with um, I'll, I'll post new videos there I post what our team is uh, up to as well team Elderblood our Gwent competitive team as well um, so you'll see updates about my personal life there as well so thank you enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge goodbye and stay nutty